All right, and here we go. This is Mega Man X2 Any%. Percent. Now, um, unlike normal Any% percent speed runs, um, Paradox is going to be collecting all the items in this run because uh, in CH4 and CH5, um, which are the fourth, well, actually, it's, yeah, it's four and five, yeah. Um, you're going to be wanting to use the Shoryuken, which speeds up the boss rush and the final fight significantly. So you're going to see Paradox collecting all the items in an any percent speed run because it is the fastest. But right now, a simple intro, all execution intro, you just saw Paradox do, it was pretty clean. Now the intro boss here, uh, we're going to see a strat called uh, CFO, named after this boss, where you're going to see Paradox using um, Dash Lemon's travel time to charge up his buster to do um, multiple damage and always keep the I boss in iframes. Uh, you're going to see this on uh, in several different forms throughout this run, actually. It's actually a pretty cool strat. You, you'll see it a in different forms with several different weapons in this run. It's actually a pretty cool mechanic. But there's just the basic buster version of CFO. Uh, we go to Wire Sponge first, and this is probably the best uh, stage to have first in the run, because A, you get... Um, Wire Sponge's weapon, Strike Chain, which uh, it gives you a weapon that, well, it's a really useful uh, movement technique uh, mechanic. Um, it'll pull you to objects uh, faster, and uh, you're going to see it used in a lot of cool ways throughout this run. And also, Sponge has uh, an RNG factor to him that we're going to see. But right now, we'll just focus on the actual stage. So here, there's actually uh, RNG involved with the stage. Uh, there can be three different patterns in that first area. Clear, sunny, or um, rainy. And two patterns here, sunny or rainy. He got uh, double sunny, which is a pretty good pattern. The best pattern is clear into sunny, because sunny is a bit laggy um, on the first screen. But Sunny is the best pattern on that second screen. So nice stage by Paradox. And now we go into Wire Sponge's fight. Now, Wire Sponge, the um, he can be uh, very slow if he gives, or well, not very slow, but he can waste a lot of time with some of his patterns, especially spinning his uh, chain. And most importantly, um, if he decides to, so here, this rain dance, if he gets to a certain amount of health, he's going to be doing this rain dance, and it'll lose around 9 seconds. Um, the only way you can prevent this rain dance is if Sponge gives you a pattern near the, uh, when he's around half health, where he grapples onto the ceiling and goes up. If you kill him while he's going up, he will not do the rain dance, and you'll be able to successfully kill him without it. Paradox did not get this pattern, which was complete luck, but he still got a pretty good split time despite that pattern. And now that we have the strike chain, which I was talking about earlier, uh, we're going to move on to Wheel Gator stage. Wheel Gator stage? Man, it's a treat to watch. Strike, you get to see a lot of strike chain movement, and we also get the Charge Buster shot. Which is pretty useful to have as a second um, stage in the run, just because of um, the strike, A, weakness order, and B, you get the Charge Buster. So, there we go. Just grappling onto the, the wall with the Strike Chain to get onto the capsule. Let's go, Paradox. Alright. So this is the uh, Buster upgrade. Uh, you're able to release... It's probably the most powerful out of all the regular Busters in X1 to 3. But uh, it has some pretty special qualities to it. For example, um, you'll see it happen in uh, several different bosses. But the uh, second shot of the... Um, the charge upgrade in X2 ignores iframes, which allows you to stack damage pretty fast. 
And we also get to charge our special weapons, um, allowing Strike Chain here to be even more useful and stretch even farther. And we're seeing very good utilization of it right now in Wheel Gator stage with the Strike Chain. A lot of technical movement in this stage with Strike Chain. Beautiful. Alright, so we're on the Wheel Gator boss. And this is a pretty difficult fight because in order to fight Gator quickly, you have a five frame window to hit him before he goes down again after you hit him with Strike Chain. So let's see if Paradox gets it. Nice, let's go. So every hit, once again, is a five frame window, every hit, to hit Gator before he goes uh, below. And it wastes a ton of time if you miss it. So I bet Paradox is feeling a very relieved right now to get that. Because especially in a no reset setting, it is a very nerve wracking. So now we're past the first two stages, and now we're going to head on to Stag stage. Now, we do not have Stag's uh, weakness, which is Bubbles, but it's actually better to do a Buster Duel with Stag, and you're able to get the Burner, which will also be a, uh, another useful movement technique, which you will see throughout the run. And the combination with Charge Burner, which we'll get to see in Magnus Centipede stage, and Strike Chain allows for beautiful movement in a lot of stages. Stag, uh, mostly a vertical stage, and you get to see more Strike Chain movement throughout the stage in a vertical setting. We also get to use um, the Wheel upgrade. Not a particularly uh, useful weapon, but we will see it a few times throughout the run. I'll just let you enjoy the stage and the beautiful final climb. Nice. Okay, so Stag Fight. Paradox, I believe, is going to be going for a version of CFO on Stag called Stag Wheel. Now, in my opinion, this is probably one of, if not the hardest fight to execute right in the game. Because you're going to have to use dash summons on him and drop a wheel down on him for CFO. Now, it seems Paradox uh, missed it, but that's fine. It's a very difficult strat to actually get off. It takes hours and hours to get consistent. Ooh. I don't know. This is looking... Ooh. Nice! <laughs> he survived. Wow, that was... Uh... That was scary. That was scary. Two health. One hit and he was dead. That was scary. But yeah, normally you would see the runner climb up with him and drop a wheel on him to get one damage off and start charging for that neon shot. And that neon shot will do four damage. Or I think five. Uh, we'll see you four in centipede five because if you charge it up enough you will get five but most of the time you'll see four but it's a good way to quickly kill stag but anyways magna centipede stage we get to see the first utilization of charge burner charge burner allows you to go um pretty fast throughout oh and we get to use strike chain as well very good opening section by Paradox. We get to use uh, Burner and uh, Strike Chain throughout this stage, and it's a perfect example of why Mega Man X2 is such a good speedrun. 
Okay, he, he got it. Okay, he got up there at least. The most important thing is he got up there. Uh, you can actually get up there with a uh, charge burner, but I think Paradox was a bit too low. Ooh, nice. So there you're actually get, able to get a quick kill on that sword. Uh, Paradox almost got it, but you're able to one-hit it uh, if you release the chain at a specific time. But we're on to the second mini-boss of the stage, which uh, we like to call Green Biker Uncle, or Green Biker Chicken. And we're just going to use our remaining burner uh, that we have to kill him off. Very nice fight. Nice zip under the block. Alright, good stage. Alright, Magnus Centipede fight. So what we want to see is a tailspin from Magnus Centipede here. So, And you'll see why if Paradox gets it. Now this is a perfect example of why Mega Man X2 is a very punishing speedrun. There we go. So basically, if you jump, dash jump towards the wall and slide down during a specific time, once his uh, final tailspin piece leaves the room, when Centipede gives his tailspin pattern, you can actually lock him in an infinite loop and you're able to perform a very quick fight on Centipede. CFOing him with the chain and uh, your neon shot, doing four damage, um, four or five damage every time. Very nice fight. Wasn't the best pattern. We want um, Centipede to do it off the bat, but it could have been way worse. All right, on to Crystal Snail Stage. Crystal Snail Stage, um, another perfect example of the beauty of Mega Man X2. We get to see more burner movement uh, and more chain movement. I'm just going to stay silent and let you enjoy the beauty of this stage. Well, never mind. I can't be silent because I just remembered. <laughs> uh, this mech, I forgot to mention it earlier. The reason Paradox is able to get over there uh, with the mech as fast, um, as fast as he is, if you're able to charge up the mech, and tap the jump button in a uh, certain in a certain rhythm, you're able to get over there without having to ditch the mech, and it's really fast. And we also just see, saw a mini boss skip there. Uh, basically, normally we do not want lag in Mega Man X2, but there, if we generate enough lag with the burner, we're actually able to cause the game to not spawn in the mini boss. And that saves us a ton of time. A little rough there towards the end, but still a pretty good stage. Oh, another thing I want to talk about here is this neon glitch. So. As you can see, Paradox is holding a, um, is storing a charge shot. Whenever you release a neon charge going into a door, you're actually able to store that charge. And you're also able to charge up another shot, um, if needed. Ooh. Snail. <laughs> Snail being troublesome. Okay, still. But uh, that can be utilized in several different ways. Uh, we saw him utilize it in Centipede Fight, um, charging up. And uh, you're actually able to swap to chain whenever you do that. In some cases, you're able to chain uh, the door, which will allow just for a tiny bit of time save. But there's there's so much cool tech in this game that just allows for such cool movement. It's a good backup on the snail fight, yeah. Alright, ostrich stage. 
Ostrich stage. Not many runners like ostrich stage. Um, ooh. Ah, because most of the stage is biking, and no one really likes the bike in Mega Man, or the Mega Man X2 speedrun. Um, just because it's pretty stressful, because we need this bike to get the heart upgrade. Ooh, that's a nice backup. It's pretty difficult to get that if you don't have full health, but Paradox has a pretty cool backup for that. But anyways, this is a pretty s stressful stage. Um, just because you don't want to crash the bike. Because if you crash the bike, you either have to go back um, to get the another bike, which is very slow, or you have to take an intentional death by um, using the burner to get the heart, but that'll result in you dying. And no one likes dying either, so it's a good thing Paradox um, got that heart on in the first try and managed to turn around without dying. Alright, Ostrich fight. So, Ostrich has a, a weird thing. Whenever he jumps up, He's actually able to, um, he actually has multiple, uh, his iframes reset whenever he jumps up, so you're actually able to get multiple hits on him with the buster and the crystal shot. And thankfully, there's no RNG in this fight, because every time you use the crystal shot on Ostrich, he will guar be guaranteed to jump up into the air, so you're able to get multiple hits on Ostrich if needed. All right, we're going into crab stage. Crab stage is going to be another stage um, full of burner movement, chain movement. Just another beautiful Mega Man X2 stage. One thing I want to mention here, um, later in the stage, you're going to see Paradox go for, um, utilize um, a slope jump. Now, in Mega Man X, whenever um, X is walking down a slope, he will actually um, be able to jump higher than usual. And that's why Paradox here was able to get that upgrade without actually having charged bubble like you would normally need to. If you go off that, if you jump off that slope the right way, your hype will be boosted and you're actually able to get up and jump on the water to actually get that upgrade. Which is pretty useful so that we don't have to do a revisit because nobody likes revisits. But good stage by Paradox. Crab fight, if um, it goes wrong, it goes very wrong. You want, normally, you would probably want crab against, um, against the wall like this, just to keep him under control, because he can go wild. He can ruin your run in a matter of seconds. And he can be very problematic, but luckily Paradox was um, able to have pretty good execution in that fight, and he managed to keep crab under control. All right, the final stage in the Mavericks, which is Morph Moth. Now, Morph Moth, um, there's not much to say about this stage. The only thing I would like to bring up is the lag. Now, this is a perfect example of the lag in Mega Man X2. It's bad. <laughs> the lag in Mega Man X2 is pretty bad, and we want to reduce it as much as possible, but sometimes lag just cannot be avoided. So this stage tends to be a pretty laggy stage. Especially the fight. We do not know why the developers decided to release 
with like without testing. Yep, this moth bite runs at 10 FPS. This is uh, perfect to be released. But yeah, not much to be said about this stage. Uh, we're just gonna see uh, more burner movement, more chain movement, as we've seen throughout um, this entire run. The only thing I want to mention is these robots. These robots are RNG. Uh, normally, we would want these robots to drop or to immediately drop, not jump at it, you like um, just happened there. But we want it to either shoot or we want it to just um, immediately just do nothing. Because it wastes time if it doesn't do one of those two patterns. So we have another chance at this. Hopefully Paradox is a better pattern this time. Yeah, nice. So that is the good pattern. You can also shoot and stay still, which is also a good pattern, but that's a really good pattern. All right, so you'll see what I mean um, when I say this fight is laggy, because it is laggy. Uh, we will see Paradox using um, another example of CFO here, using the uncharged shot and using its time to travel in order to um, charge up another shot. Paradox executed that fight very well. It was laggy, but he managed to keep it under control. Ooh, Moth Bay's a bit rough, but he didn't die, thankfully. That fight can go south very fast. Very, very fast. Moth hits like a tank in Mega Man X2. I do not know why. Because it's just a Moth. But apparently, um, Moth hits like a tank, even with Honor Ring, so... Now we're approaching the Counter Hunter stages. Now, this is going to be a perfect uh, example. This first stage in the Counter Hunters, uh, it's a perfect example, another perfect example of why Mega Man X2 is such a fun speed run to watch and to play. We're going to see mo pretty much almost every weapon utilized in this. We're going to see burner movement, chain movement. We're going to see crystals here as well. Okay. We're going to see Silk Shot trying to kill this guy right here. We're going to see um, Sonic Slicer used to kill um, the Crushers as well. I'm just uh, just going to let everyone watch the beauty of Counter Hunter um, 1. Nice. Alright, time for a pretty relieving boss fight to have um, towards the end game, because a lot of the boss fights in this game are very hard. And this one, the strategy is to stand with charge bubble. Yep. It's, it's a pretty boring fight, but um, it's a pretty relieving fight to have late in the game just because of how many difficult fights and difficult movement is in this game. It's nice to, nice to have a break, especially after uh, CH1. CH1 is the, probably the most taxing on the hands with how much swapping um, and vertical scaling um, there is. All right, so now on to CH2. CH2, we're going to see, it's a very short stage, but hopefully we're going to see Paradox be able to um, go under one of the pl uh, floating platforms so that he can catch the ride of one of the elevators early, and it saves around 20 seconds. Ah, uh, just missed it. Oh, 
Ah, you went for the backup. So what you saw Paradox do there, um, he used a neon jump to try and damage boost uh, on that flame to try and get up so he didn't have to wait for the elevator. Um, you're gonna see it. It might be better for me to explain uh, neon jumps in CH3 where we see them use. But there we go. Now Paradox got ele elevator skip. Um, pretty cool demonstration of the neon jump in an attempt to back that up. So yeah, pretty short stage, but it can go south pretty fast. And now the most technical fight um, in Mega Man X2, um, it's up there with Stag, uh, it's Sergei's. Now, what we see Paradox doing here, um, he's trying to hit Sergei's with, um, twice with the same, um, uh, he's trying to hit him twice with the same Sonic Slicer, and so that he doesn't have to wait for the charge, uh, shot to charge him. Um, he got two there, which is pretty good. So, a pretty good fight. Now we move on to Counter Hunter 3. Now, Counter Hunter 3, we're going to see uh, what we saw in CH2 earlier, which is a Neon Jump. And now, a Neon Jump, uh, basically, they are frame perfect, and there is a frame where X is actually in the standing animation for his charge shot. And Paradox is able to use that to gain an additional jump, which allows him to scale this wall just beautifully. He gets every neon jump. My goodness, that was a good climb. Oh, we want full health here for the uh, Shoryuken because uh, Paradox is gonna neon up there to get the Shoryuken. Okay, he got health. That's good. Yeah, let's go. You got every neon. Neons are not easy to get. They require a lot of skill. Especially that first one. That first one is um, way harder than the second one. But it's very impressive to see him get every neon in the stage. Alright, and now we're going to see the first example of the Shoryuken. Now, the Shoryuken doesn't actually one-hit. It does damage based on how long you're actually inside of the enemy's hitbox. Most of the time, you're going to see a one-hit like there, but it's not a one-hit like uh, Bihadoken. All right, that was actually a pretty good stage besides uh, the bomb. That was beautiful. We got to see every neon executed successfully. That was really good. All right, so we're into CH4 now. This is the refights. We're gonna see demonstrations of the Shoryuken. Um, we're gonna have eight Shorykens in this stage. Some are more difficult than others. Okay, Paradox is going for the Gator Shoryuken first, which is one of the hardest ones. So we're gonna see him use, uh, utilize the uh, five frame window to hit Gator before he goes under. Four times, and then Shoryuken. Nice. Very well executed. One of, if not the most difficult Shoryuken. I would say probably um, I, I would say that's the most difficult shore you can to execute in this uh, whole boss rush. Centipede, sure you, ooh, didn't see he didn't it did not one hit. It did um, a lot of damage. So there we go. There's the second hit. Sometimes it'll take two shore you can to kill um, if you accidentally are not in the hitbox long enough. Shoryuken's weird. Mega Man X2 is weird, but we love it. All 
All right, stag short you. Ironically, you do not want to go too fast in stag short you. If you do stag short you the very first when the uh, fight first begins, you don't get the full damage off. And it is a painful lesson to learn as a runner. You cannot go too fast on Stag Shoryu. Crab Shoryu, he has three different patterns to start off with. Fastest is jumping. Like, there we go. The jump pattern. He also has the pattern where he can bubble. Or he can just walk around. Jumping is the best pattern because you can sure you can as pretty much the quick uh, the most quick with that pattern. Spun sure you can. We want him to just not spin, and he got the jump. Jump is the best pattern. Going up is a relieving pattern because you have multiple tries to sure you can. And if you accidentally miss, well, if you um end up misinputting, you get another chance. Um, and it's also doesn't waste any time. But the spin, the spin wastes time. And it's also pretty dangerous. Moth Shoryu, uh, this is an example of a Shoryuken that cannot be, um, you cannot Shoryuken Moth in one hit. You have to Shoryuken it, both of his phases in order to kill him. So we have two more Shoryus left, I believe. We have Ostrich Shoryu and then Snail Shoryuken. So Ostrich, optimally, he's just gonna jump over Ostrich and Shoryuken to the left. Nicely done. One hit. And finally, Snail Shoryu. Um, there's um, several different ways to actually approach Snail Shoryu. You can YOLO and just um, go right up to him and Shoryu in a certain way. Uh, you can buffer a shot and Shoryu that way. Like what Paradox does here. And you can also uh, use Mines to guarantee that Shoryu. So Paradox... Uh, use the mind strat. He got the shorty off of snail. Nice rush. Nothing really bad went on in rush. That was a pretty good rush. I think the only mistake uh, that was made in rush was uh, the scent shoryu, but uh, that wasn't too major at all. He was able to back that up pretty quickly. That was a very good rush. And now we're off to the final stage, which is Magnus Centipede stage. And we're gonna, ooh, okay, nice. That can actually be problematic if you don't kill that. Because we want full health going into the Shoryuken um, of Zero, obviously. We need full health to Shoryuken. And we can actually shore you here to get up closer to Zero. If we shore you can, Right as um, X enters the door, if you end, um, then you are actually able to shorty or shorty you uh, get right up to zero, so you can shorty him like this. Nice. So zero has been defeated. Opens up um, the hole to go to Sigma. And we have two Shoryus left, which is Wolverine and Virus. Wolverine has several different patterns. We want Wolverine to rush over to Paradox and then jump up on the wall. Nice, that's the pattern we want. He didn't exactly get the, the full hit, but he didn't end up um, getting hit in that fight, so that's nice. All right, so time is coming up on this final hit on Virus. Oh, 
Okay. Can you get it? Oh, nice time. That was really close. GG. That was really close. I was scared that wasn't gonna hit. <laughs> I was very scared that wasn't gonna hit, but luckily, Paradox clutched it out. GG. I do want to emphasize, um, it is difficult to actually get a good run of this game, especially in a marathon setting. So props to Paradox for managing, for managing to pull out a pretty good time in a marathon. 35.17 looks like. That's a pretty good time. Yo. <laughs> Yo, what's up? That was actually pain and suffering, dude. That was <laughs> that was something. Damn. Dude, the stag was something else. You see that? <laughs> the, the stag was so just... Oh, dude. <laughs> I was so worried <laughs> during that. Yeah, we don't talk about that, dude. No, the second I didn't hit him on like the second lemon... Uh, my rhythm, all of it fell off, and then I shot a wheel when I was on the ground standing So I don't know what I was doing. Like, <laughs> uh, that was something oh, else. I could, I could feel this. I could just feel this. Yes. <laughs> dude, I literally sniped that dude when he was like point blank on the last shot, and I was at oh, one yeah. HP. <laughs> I was at uh, Yeah, you were one hit uh, during uh, the yeah. end of that fight. That was dude, really that was, close. That was not okay. <laughs> Like, yeah, and the elevator skip, dude. I like, I I had to go for that one. Like, come on, dude. I I I was expecting you to wait, but then I saw you do the double. Go, oh, <laughs> <laughs> is he going for? Yeah. Neon alley skip. Let's go. I I just can't wait, dude. I I can't. Yeah, sit down there for twenty seconds. Yeah. Anyways, uh, wait. Are we still on the stream? Yes. Oh, all right. Ugh. So, that was a yeah, that was a pretty good run. The only the only like there was only like a few like major mistakes. Yeah, but, like, like major, the major. Like yeah, but like the rush seemed pretty clean. Besides scent and oh, scent or something else. Yeah. Yeah, scent. Uh, what it, else? It was uh, weird. But that was a pretty good run. Uh, Thirty-five seventeen. That is that's a pretty good time. It's it's pretty hard to get a good run in this game like in a no reset setting because there's so much to go wrong every mistake yeah. in this game is so punishing yeah oh yeah usually it goes like i'm on an okay run on like a marathon but then this shorty rush i just mess up everything like that's how it usually goes yeah that was a that was a good demonstration of the shorty rush yeah oh yeah sometimes i don't want to hit a centipede it kind of sucks man I really need to work on that. What else was scuffed? Oh yeah. Um, did you know my bike by uh, bike strat I do? Yeah, I did not like. I did not know you actually did that. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I was so worried when I it, saw you didn't have it, full health. It looks so scuffed, but it's a hundred percent consistency, dude. Literally, you don't miss it like that. You just don't. And especially if you get hit, you like have to go for that because like. Trying to turn around while you get the health drop, like it's just not it, dude. Like it's really scary. Oh, and the crab, yeah. I'm actually happy. Like, I I kind of adjusted to that pattern, but it was still kind of, yeah. But it felt oh, really cool. you? No, no. Like when I killed him with the wheel, like it felt oh, really good. Like yeah, I, I don't that know was why. you kept crab under control. Thank because this dude jumped him. twice, dude. What is he doing? <laughs> The jumping's the like after the first jump, you don't want him to jump again. It can get out of yeah. hand, but you manage that to keep him under control, thankfully. All yeah. Right. Uh, don't mean to interrupt, but we do need oh, to stick to schedule uh, real quick. So, uh, thank you very much for the stream. It was very entertaining. Yeah. Uh, congrats on your finish, and Thanks. for everybody else, Jeez. stick around. We've got one final, uh, one final event tonight. We've got Earthbound Randomizer with Pro Peace. So I'll see you all in a little bit.
All right. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you.